Welcome to my channel, INTJ Island. Today, I'm going to talk about the difference between an assertive and a turbulent personality type. I would like to thank Tamara, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, for suggesting this topic. At 16personalitytypes.com, their test results include a modifier to the basic four-letter code. For an INTJ, you can be either an INTJ A or an INTJ T. When I looked into it a little deeper, I found that this added modifier indicates more or less a state of being in relationship to the environment around you. I tested out as an A or assertive type, and that indicates that I didn't engage all that much in pushing for things to change if things were pretty good where they are. A T or a turbulent type is more likely to be unhappy with the way things are and is driven to change them in order to make things better. The advantage of being an A type is that you are pretty happy generally where you are. Your boat isn't sinking, your storeroom is well supplied, and the water is calm. Things are good. The advantage of being a T type is that you know things can be better and you are driven to make them so. There is an island around here somewhere, and you want to reach it soon because a storm may be coming. The assertive type is usually happier because he is more prone to accept things as they are. The turbulent type is more successful because he pushes to use his talents to hit some higher state or goal. In my own life, I've had a few examples that come to mind that highlight the difference. In ninth grade, I was taking algebra. I got an A the first quarter, and it was easy. When it is easy for me, I do well. I like to learn when it is easy. I can be driven to learn even when it's difficult, but when it is easy, I soak it up without even trying. Then in the second quarter, I discovered basketball. Suddenly, I was excited about mastering that game. Taking time to do my homework became secondary. In algebra, I continued to pick up all the material in class, and I was doing great on the tests, but I started to miss some of my homework. My grade fell to a C. Then something happened that was unique in my life. Until this point, people would yell at me for failing, but if I were passing, even with a C or a D, no one really cared. This time, my teacher got really upset with me for getting less than I could have gotten. He banned me from all sports and all social activities at school until I finished a fairly thick algebra workbook, and then I took a test and passed it. A test? Really? That part was like threatening a fish with water. However, I was at a boarding school, and so I was effectively corralled by this edict. I had to come to his classroom instead of going to the evening activities. I was seated at a desk and had the workbook in front of me. There were a couple of other students there as well. This got my attention. I already knew the material, and the point was to motivate me to get my homework done. I almost instantly understood this. There were answers in the back of the workbook, and since I already knew the material from listening in class, I was through that book in just a few sessions, and I blew the test away with a very high score. And the teacher got his wish because I always got my homework done from that day forward, right on through my math classes in 12th grade. I had A's from then on in math, and everyone was happy. He had effectively converted me from a laid-back assertive type to a driven turbulent type. Unfortunately, this event could only do so much. It didn't change my basic type. And so, in most of my other classes, I did what was interesting and what came easily, and that was good enough for passing grades, and often even high grades. And I was happy with that. I was never driven to get a 4.0, all A's, grade point average, even though I could have reached that goal if it had been my serious desire. But I didn't go into courses looking for good grades. I went into each course either because I hoped to learn something useful or because it was required and I had to get it out of the way. I took typing because I wanted to learn how to type. If memory serves, it was my sophomore year. I know it was before my junior year and I'm pretty sure it wasn't my first year there. In any case, I am so glad I took that class. My mother had encouraged me to take the class, but there weren't too many guys taking it. In the school annual, 
the teacher was listed as the head of secretarial skills. She also taught shorthand, but I had no interest in that whatsoever. Even the typing class was mostly girls. If I were going into a class looking for dates, it would have been perfect. Other than possibly shorthand, the only other course in the school that was more female dominant was home economics, since most of the girls were planning on becoming housewives. But I was still quite outside the social world of dating at that time. Girls were a mystery to me, and I was watching them, but not pursuing them. At the time, I was focused upon learning the keyboard on the manual typewriter. There were two electric machines at the back of the room, but I did almost all of my work on the manual machine at my desk. I never aspired to get an A. I just wanted to learn how to type. Today, I'm very thankful I took that class because I spend a great deal of my time at the keyboard of a computer. When I was hacking away at that manual typewriter, the idea of a computer never once crossed my mind, because no one I knew even dreamed of a day when computers would be inside of people's homes. Even in a job environment, I had not yet pictured a day when I'd be typing on a keyboard connected to a computer. I was still mastering my slide rule at that time. I stayed with the course until the end, and I got a C if I remember correctly. But I could type well enough so that when I finally sat down at a computer keyboard, I wasn't lost. No hunt and peck for me. Most guys at that time were not so lucky. I approached that class as an assertive type, as I did with most of my classes. There was one guy, however, who started the course who was strongly a turbulent type. He was driven to get a 4.0 straight A average, and he quickly realized that this class was beyond him, and he would not get an A. He immediately dropped out. It is a shame when hitting an academic goal stops you from learning something you might need later on. This can be a problem for turbulent types. I have no idea if I could have pulled an A in that class or not. I do know I would have had to put in extra typing practice time to do it, and I just wasn't interested in doing that. Whatever I could pick up during class was good enough for me. Now about 10 years later, in the summer of 1978, I was in Tennessee at the Memphis Naval Air Station. And they probably had Naval Intelligence named that because it wasn't in Memphis at all, but it was outside the city in Millington, Tennessee. This class was mandatory for me in order to accept my orders to be stationed at NAS Lemoore, California. And that is where my lovely wife and young son were located waiting for me while I attended this three-month school. What was great about this course for me was the digital electronics. It was not a computer in the normal sense of the word. There was no central processor and no coding. It was all hardwired. Throwing switches could change the mode of operation, and there were a lot of things that could be controlled externally, but there was no software to load or run. All my electronics training prior to this was analog. I first learned about tube theory, and then they moved me up to transistors, telling me that a transistor worked like a triode tube, but only smaller. No integrated circuit chips, and no data buses or address buses or processors. So I was eager to learn about AND gates and OR gates. I had taken some logic instruction in math class in high school, so these circuits made perfect sense to me. It opened up a whole new world of electronics for me, however. I loved that part of it. I was cruising along at the top of my class, soaking up everything that was interesting to me. But I wasn't there to master the equipment. In my own mind, I was there to learn whatever was interesting. I was running in my normal assertive mode. The course covered a system for tracking aircraft that worked in sync with the air search radar. There was the IFF gear to read out the four digit identification friend or foe code and a system to paint or present the digital data for an aircraft over the top of the radar suite blip for the aircraft. This system displayed the IFF code and the aircraft elevation and a spot or dot that marked the two-dimensional position. Later on, we learned how to calibrate the system so that the radar blip and the spot marked exactly the same location on the scope. 
As part of figuring out the location of the aircraft relative to the sweep of the radar readback around the air traffic controller's scope, they needed a value for pi. In the lesson where we covered that circuit, the instructor showed how the electronics produced its value for pi by dividing 22 by 7. I raised my hand and I pointed out that was going to give an inaccurate value for pi. This triggered a debate about my assertion. A student I will discuss in a moment uh, stated without reservation that 22 divided by 7 was exactly equal to pi. Even the instructor thought I was wrong. But being a conscientious instructor, he looked it up on break. If you divide 7 into 22, the result will diverge from the actual value of pi on the third digit to the right of the decimal place. A slide rule would be just as precise as that. It also will start to repeat pi is irrational. It never repeats, and by definition, it can't be defined by a ratio of two integers. After the break, the instructor told the class that my assertion was correct. However, for this application, having two correct digits to the right of the decimal was enough. The error would not affect the outcome significantly. Without the INTJ sitting in the class, things could have moved along smoothly without worrying about the facts. Alas, I am a stickler for the facts. The student I mentioned was not an INTJ, but he was running in turbulent mode. He wanted to be top of the class. He was fortunate that I was an INTJ-A and not an INTJ-T, because I only applied myself as much as required to learn what was important to me. We both left the school happy. I knew a ton of things about digital electronics that I was going to be able to use for decades afterwards. I fumbled one of the troubleshooting problems on the final test, and the other guy ended up with the top grade. He was ecstatic, and I was actually happy for him because I honestly didn't care about that. I got what I wanted. I think most INTJ A types will understand this. The turbulent INTJs might not. I'm not sure. What if I had cared about the top spot and I had studied in the evenings like he did instead of joining a baseball league on base and having fun like I did? Would I have been any more happy? I don't think so. And I know the other guy would have been miserable. Now I could have lived with that, of course, and not given it a thought. But since it went the way it did, I found that I actually felt happy for the guy. My feelings can react in ways that surprise me at times. It cost me nothing and meant a lot to him. I gave him a pat on the back and a handshake, and I got on my plane and flew home to my wife and kids. Now that is what made me feel happy. One time in 1973, I recall being on full-blown turbulent mode. I was going to basic electricity and electronics preparatory school in San Diego, California. It was just after Thanksgiving and before Christmas. The school was scheduled to last six weeks, but when I got there, I found out that it was all self-study and self-paced. I was to read the material and then be tested upon it, and the instructors were there only to answer questions if students got confused. For me, they might as well not have been there. My wife and son were waiting for me, and I wanted to get back to them as quickly as I could, before Christmas if possible. The sooner I finished, the sooner I could get back to my family. Rather than taking the normal six weeks, I went on full turbulent burn for 10 days and knocked out the entire course. I studied in class all evening and then all weekend long. I got through all the modules, passed all the tests in the high 90s, and had my instructor shaking his head in amazement. When an INTJ is running in turbulent mode, it is hard to conceive of an intellectual challenge that he will not excel at. I am guessing that Elon Musk is a turbulent type, because he is about as driven as anyone I have seen. He is on full overdrive on pursuing his goals. This is an aspect of my personality that I have puzzled over all my life. I have often wondered, what if? What if I had applied myself and gone for a 4.0 GPA and gotten it? What if I had gone to college and done my best? Where would I be now? And most of all, would I be happier than I am today? I certainly would be better off financially, but I don't see how I could be happier. I have the love of my life beside me each day. I have two amazing sons and three grandkids that are also amazing. 
It is something to contemplate, but I am pretty happy with my life, and that is a big plus in my ledger book. I feel like my life is in the black on that score. But one still wonders, what if I were a T rather than an A? If you enjoyed the video, please click like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'll see you next time.